My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the considerations that go into providing anesthesia for patients with red hair. If you find... Max, what's going on here? Oh, hey Dr. Beckerman. Hey. Hey, I was just uh, making a video about patients with uh, red hair. Are you sure you're qualified to talk about that? I, um, you know, do you want to say something? Yeah, let's give it a whirl. Why don't you pull up a chair and we'll chat. All right, sure, Max. So, Dr. Beckerman, in this video, the idea is talking about the different patient characteristics that we have to consider as anesthesiologists in terms of dosing our medications. Mm. And obviously, the topic here is patients with red hair. So I guess you would be the perfect person to opine on what's been your experience taking care of patients with red hair. Yeah, well first off, Max, let me say, um, thanks for finally choosing an interesting topic to talk about. I'm glad to be here. Obviously, when we take care of patients with red hair, it's something that I've always uh, keenly been aware of. So whenever we're uh, taking care of our patients, we always like to think of it in terms of individualized based medicine. So what do you know about that, Max? Right, so I think about how much does the patient weigh, how old is the patient, what surgery are they coming in for, uh, how deep of a plane of anesthesia do I need to provide for that surgery, mm -hmm. and a number of other characteristics pertaining to their past medical history. Exactly, so usually we like to think about you know, patient demographics as well, genomics, you know, taking all these things into account, you know, biologic history, and things like that. So you know, redheads, obviously, we represent a, a, a small but firm uh, one to two percent of the patient population. So you know, uh, as rare as we might be, you know, this is something that comes up pretty frequently. Interestingly, I have not encountered any information about taking care of patients with red hair in any of the textbooks that I've read. You know, historically, this isn't something that we talk about much, but uh, we like to refer to this kind of uh, previously as anecdotal medicine, right? So uh, before things make it into the textbook, it usually has to do with a lot of individualized observation that makes it, you know, around our colleagues. It's things that we might speak about. So. You know, this is something that I observed myself, you know, the first few times that I took care of a, a red-haired patient. There were some things which I noticed, you know, both when giving kind of volatile anesthetic, which we'll talk about, as well as, you know, IV anesthetic. So obviously I don't want to violate HIPAA with anything that I do on my YouTube channel, but if I may ask, have you ever received anesthesia before? So actually I have. Um, I like to think of myself as somewhat of a runner and uh, going along that route, I've had a couple knee surgeries already uh, at this point. Prior to each one of these surgeries, I like to have a conversation with the anesthesiologist uh, saying that, you know, I might be one of his own and, uh, you know, I like to talk to him about the anesthetic plan and then usually after the surgery, hopefully it went well, I like to review kind of how it went. Shockingly, after each time, uh, I was told that I required a lot of anesthesia. Did you happen to have an opportunity to look at your anesthetic record and see exactly what the dosing was that you received of the anesthetic agents? I'd never miss an opportunity to nerd out over anesthesia or the anesthetic record. So, you know, I pulled it up with the anesthesiologist afterward, kind of looked at, uh, you know, the IV and volatile anesthetics I was given. And I guess I wasn't particularly shocked when I saw that, you know, the requirement I had was, you know, a fair degree more than the person, you know, in my particular um, age range that, you know, they would normally receive. Do you happen to recall exactly what the dosage was of, say, how much propofol they induced you with, if that's what the induction agent was? Yeah, so I think, you know, let's say normally you'd give, you know, what, one to two milligrams per kilogram of, you know, propofol, kind of as a starting point. Um, so, you know, that might uh, lead to someone giving a patient like myself, you know, around 200 milligrams of propofol. So I remember that it was at least kind of 300 to kick things off in my case. Wow. Um, yeah. Super fascinating and makes me wonder when you were a patient, were you concerned that you weren't going to get enough anesthesia knowing that you had a propensity to maybe need more? Yeah, so obviously I think it is a fair concern. It's a conversation I had with my anesthesiologist beforehand. You know, I basically asked him the question, were you, you know, aware of kind of the, you know, original anecdotal evidence and, you know, which became kind of evidence-based that redheads might require a little bit more anesthesia. And he said, you know, in his, you know, time in the field, it's something that he had actually noticed as well he had kind of already made the mental preparations to kind of go along that route and, you know, maybe, you know, go a little above and beyond what he would typically give someone based on, you know, my age and weight. One of the things that I sometimes have patients express a concern about is making sure that we know to give enough medications. Yeah, Max, so, you know, ultimately we realize that, you know, all patients are individuals, but, you know, everyone at some point does need to achieve a certain clinical effect, you know, in terms of, you know, getting them through a uh, particular surgery. So, you know, we always take that kind of into account. 
Oh, all right, Max, it's about that time. Uh, despite your hair color, I'm sure I've left this topic in great hands. Uh, well, it's such a coincidence that you happened to just be in the ORs when I was filming this video, but uh, thanks very much for your input and I'll see you around the hospital. Yeah, Max, happy to help. It has long been known that people with red hair have mutations in the melanocortin-1 receptor, which is involved with the expression of skin pigmentation in melanin specifically. Despite the fact that redheads don't get much real estate in the anesthesia textbooks, there actually were some interesting studies that were published almost a couple decades ago looking at the anesthetic needs of patients with red hair. The way that I've broken up these studies is based on depth of anesthesia, starting with local anesthesia, and then sedation, and then general anesthesia. And if you're not familiar with the continuum of depths of anesthesia, then you might check out this video that I've linked right here, where I go through what exactly general anesthesia is and how it compares to other planes of anesthesia. One of these studies was looking specifically at how much local anesthesia is needed to prevent pain from either an electrical, a cold or a hot stimulus that could be perceived as painful. What the authors found is that the local anesthetic lidocaine was significantly less effective in preventing pain from a cold or hot stimulus in patients with red hair. The study methodology was very robust and is pretty fascinating to read about, so I've left a link in the description below if you want to see all the details of that study. The next study that I found fascinating looked at how sedated redheads were after receiving a benzodiazepine called midazolam, which is very frequently used in anesthesia as an anxiolytic and something that can help sedate patients during certain types of procedures. By comparing redheaded study subjects to the non-redheaded study subjects, the authors found that midazolam provided significantly less sedation for the patients with red hair. I've also gone ahead and put a link to this study in the description down below. The last study that I was able to find is really fascinating and it looked at the anesthetic requirement of redheads under general anesthesia in response to a painful electrical stimulus. The authors went an extra step of even doing an analysis of the patient's blood sample to look at the melanocortin-1 receptor gene and make sure that they actually had the mutation that is associated with having red hair. In this study, the authors induced general anesthesia and maintained that general anesthesia with an inhaled volatile agent called desflurane. And what they found is that redheaded patients on average needed 6.2% inhaled concentration of desflurane as compared to 5.2% of the same medication for patients without red hair. The implication, of course, is that patients with red hair have a higher maintenance anesthetic requirement in order to be under general anesthesia and not respond to a painful stimulus. I've also provided a link to this study in the description below, and it's worth pointing out that this wasn't just published in some small journal. It was published in a journal called Anesthesiology, which is one of the main journals in the entire field. Having looked at those studies, I think it's important to circle back to ultimately what we as anesthesiologists care about and what patients care about, which is making sure that patients receive as much anesthesia as they need for the desired clinical effects. And so in my own practice, when I see a patient with red hair, it's just one of the many factors that I consider when I'm coming up with how much anesthesia I anticipate the patient is going to need. Typically our medications are either dosed on a per kilogram basis or in a percent concentration basis, which is dialed in on one of our vaporizers for the inhaled anesthetic agents. And because anesthesiologists keep a very close eye on how the patient is doing throughout the duration of surgery, we're always attuned to any sort of changes in vital signs that might indicate that the patient's anesthetic depth is either too much or too little, and then we can make changes to our medications as needed. This idea of titrating a medication to clinical effect is an important concept both for trainees and patients to keep in mind, so that they can understand that the right amount of anesthesia will be given based on the individual patient's needs. Red hair is just one clinical feature that anesthesiologists take into consideration as we're coming up with the anticipated dosing, but that's always subject to change based on the number of other factors that were already mentioned in my conversation with Dr. Beckerman. If you found this video interesting, you might wanna check out this video that I made about how opioids are used frequently as part of an anesthetic plan. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for finally choosing an interesting topic to talk about. That's a good joke. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. We'll keep that. Did you you just thought of that off right the top of my head? Okay. Damn. <laughs>
Yeah. You're gonna be overtaking me. I'm no, 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 no. Soon.